Hey guys, so today's video is gonna have basically everything you need to know about how to start a project pan in 2022. This video was actually requested a few months back. They were saying, I love watching your project pans. Um, I wanna start one of my own. Can you make a video explaining how to start one? So I felt like now would be good timing as we're kind of closing off 2021. A lot of people are kind of setting goals for the new year and a lot of people are probably considering starting a project pan, maybe for the first time. And I have been doing project pans for the past five years, which sounds like a long time. So I've definitely learned a thing or two. I definitely have some tips to share with you guys for how to set you set yourself up for success. So I wanna go ahead and start this video off by explaining what a project pan is in case you are brand new to the topic and also some reasons why you might wanna start one. So a project pan is essentially a project where you set out to use up beauty items. It could be makeup, skincare, hair care, body care, really whatever you want and there are so many reasons why you might want to participate in a project pan. I wrote down six main goals or reasons that you might have behind starting a project pan. The first one might be to downsize your makeup collection. Maybe you have realized that you have way too much makeup or way more makeup than you would like to have and you want to kind of start paring it down but you don't want to let any of those products go to waste. You wanna see yourself actually use them up all the way to the end. Another reason might be to use up makeup items before they expire. Makeup, unfortunately, even though it is really fun to collect makeup, it, it also has an expiration date. Every makeup product will eventually expire. And once you realize that, you might say, wow, you know, I really wanna make sure I get my money's worth out of these items before they expire and I inevitably have to throw them away. Another reason might be to curb your spending or just slow down on your makeup consumption overall. This beauty community and beauty industry is all very focused on consumerism and buying the next best thing. And we're seeing hundreds of new product releases announced every day it seems like so it can be very easy to get stuck in this cycle of constantly purchasing new makeup and then never really getting around to using any of it because you just have too much so project panning is a really great way to focus on using what you have and really getting the full value and enjoyment out of your products that you've again, spent your hard-earned money on. Another reason might be to better get to know the products that you own. Maybe you have a lot of products that you don't really feel like you even have much of an opinion on. I've said this before on my channel, but I feel like I never truly know a product until I have panned it or put it in a project pan, or at least used it a lot. <laughs> and you really come to understand your own personal preferences through that process. And that brings me to the fifth goal that you might have with project panning, and that would be to just discover your own makeup preferences and kind of learn what you like in makeup products, what you don't like in makeup products. When you really commit yourself to using a product all the way to the end, or at least until you hit pan, you really start to discover things about yourself and what you like in makeup products and your makeup preferences overall. Once Maybe once you've used something up all the way to the end, you might realize, you know what, I don't know if I want to repurchase this or a similar item like this. I feel like I kind of grew to realize that this isn't really my thing or I did a video on my channel earlier this year about products that I fell in love with because of project panning, products I changed my mind about through project panning. I really have learned so much about just myself and what I like in makeup through project panning. And then the sixth and final goal I wrote down was to learn how long it takes to finish a product. It can be very eye-opening to see just how long it can take to use up one single item. And that kind of feeds back into my earlier point about project panning being a good way to kind of curb your spending and slow down your consumerism because it really goes to show just how long it takes to use up one blush or lip gloss or whatever it may be. And it really shows you the true value. And even if you are into like tracking your uses, you can see the cost per use of different items. My friend here on YouTube, Too Much Tosh, has a series on her channel where she talks about how long it takes to use up makeup. And it's very eye-opening to be able to calculate the actual value of a product, the cost per use when you've used it all the way to the end. And even if you aren't into tracking how many uses it took to finish something, it can still show you like, wow, you know, I really don't need to have 20 blushes when one single blush takes me an entire year to go through. So those were the six kind of main overarching goals, I, at least that I know of for project panning. Everyone has different goals. So even though project panning may not be for everyone, I really do think it can be a good 
experiment or challenge for a lot of people, no matter where you are in your makeup journey, whether you've been wearing makeup for years or you're just now getting into it, I think it's a good thing for everyone to try at least once. And so that brings me to the next part of my video, which is, okay, I'm sold, I wanna start a project pan, how do I start it? How do I structure it? How do I pick the products? There are so many different ways that you can structure your project pan. You can really make it your own depending on your personality, your usage habits, depending on how often you wear makeup, how much makeup you have, how structured you like things to be. You can be as structured or as loose with it as you want. Um, I am somebody who really enjoys structure, like I just thrive with structure. So I'll go ahead and tell you how I like to structure my project pans, but you yours might look totally different. But my favorite way to project pan, and this is how I've been doing it for the past three years, it's just this is just what works for me. I keep it very simple, and this is probably what I'll continue to do for years and years to come. I just this is just what I enjoy. But my favorite way to do it is just to have one year-long rolling project pan. And I'll explain more about what that terminology means, but basically what that means, oh my god, Heidi has her tongue sticking out. Oh, so cute. So basically what that means is at the start of the year, I pick 10 items, but you can pick however many you want. I just like to do a Project 10 pan because 10 is a nice round number. It's not too many where I'm getting overwhelmed. It's not too few that I'm getting bored. I pick 10 products at the beginning of the year, and then I set a goal for each of those items. Do I want to completely finish that product? Usually I want to completely finish it. Do I just want to hit pan on it? Or maybe I want to hit some kind of usage goal, like I want to use this product 20 times. And once I reach my goal on a product, I roll it out and roll something new in its place. So that's what the rolling part of that phrase means. For me, this keeps it really interesting and fun because it motivates me to hit that goal so that I can then roll something new in. And it just kind of, it keeps the ball rolling all year. I have a lot of fun with it. And I also get really excited to come on here every month in my project pan updates and show you guys what I finished and what I'm roll what products I chose to roll in. So that's how I do it. And it, it, I keep it really simple. Some people like to have multiple projects going on at once. I am considering in the new year also doing a pan those eyeshadows. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. You guys have really encouraged me <laughs> to give it a try. So that is like a, an eyeshadow focused project pan where you randomly select five eyeshadows from your collection. And once you hit pan, on one of them you roll a new one in so it's a similar concept but it's, it's really focused on eyeshadows some people like to do a pan that palette where they try to completely use up an eyeshadow palette there's like a nail polish project pan anything you can think of there's probably a project pan for it in the past i even did like a lotion project pan a skincare project pan sometimes i actually have another project pan going on i know i said i like to have just one project pan going on at a time but this year for like the very end of the year i made a list of like 25 items mostly non-makeup items like skincare body care that i wanted to finish by the end of the year just to kind of clear out my products in like my bathroom my bathroom closet because I just was noticing that I had way too much and I kind of wanted to clear some things out before the new year. There's lots of different ways you can do it. You can also do a shorter term project pan. I mentioned I like to do like a year long project um, where I'm constantly like rolling things out and in. You could also do a short term seasonal project like there's you know a finish five by spring or a finish 13 by Halloween. There's all kinds of different ones you can do. Maybe you want to try out just a short term one just to see how you do. That's how I started out. I just wanted to say okay I picked five things. I want to see if I can finish all of these by spring like the spring equinox is it equinox yeah and that can be a good way to kind of ease yourself into it if you're brand new picking fewer items can be a good route to go especially if you're just starting out and you just want to start seeing how long it takes to use up certain things how much you enjoy panning certain things so you can decide whether to make it rolling or not rolling like you just have a set five items or ten items or however many you want and you can decide whether you want to add a new product in once you use something up or if you just want to use those five things up and call it done. Some people also like to do usage-based project pans, so it's not focused around specifically hitting pan or using up items, but it's just you want to use an item a certain number of times, then roll it out. Um, Rebecca Morgan, another great project panning YouTuber, did a project pan called 30 by 30 this year where she wanted to just use items 30 times before her 30th birthday. It was a really fun project pan, so you can check that out. Yeah, I mean, search YouTube for project pans and you will find all kinds of different ways to do it, um, all kinds of inspiration, so there's really no right or wrong way to do it. There's lots of like group projects that go on on Instagram. I think there's even like Facebook groups that do it, but 
Um, there was like a Partners in Cream project pan where people got together and chose any kind of cream and liquid products to focus on. So truly, the options and the possibilities are endless. Another thing that I like to do, and a lot of project panners do this as well, is I like to track my uses, uses on my products and I set a specific goal for how many times I want to use an item that month because I do my updates once a month, which we'll get to how to do updates and things like that in a moment. Here's how I have it listed, very simple. I just have this notebook and I need to get a new one because this one is almost full. But I have my list of items. Right now I only have nine items in my project pan because we're getting close to the finale and I didn't want to have too many things in. But next to each item I have them all listed out for my Elf Glistening Peach Blush. Um, I wrote that I want to use it 10 times and finish it this month, and I draw a tally mark each time I use that item, so I just keep this next to me as I'm getting ready, and once I'm done with my full face, I'll just draw a tally mark underneath each item that I used that day. This is helpful for a couple of reasons, because number one, I do like to set that usage goal, like I have some of them I want to use 10 times, some of them 5 times, 7 times, like it depends on what the product is, but that number one motiva motivates me to actually use that product and make sure that I'm getting use out of my items so that I can actually see progress, because I don't want the whole month to go by and then realize I didn't use something at all. And number two, it helps me see how many uses it took to make a certain chunk of progress. So if in a month I saw a lot of progress on something, I can say, oh, well, I used it 15 times. So 15 uses is the number of times I need to use this in order to see that amount of progress. It's just good information to have. I am definitely like a numbers person. I like to see that kind of thing. But some people also find it to feel too much like a chore to track their uses. So if that's you, to totally forget it. Don't do it. But um, for me, I find it really fun. And I also like to be able to tell you guys how many uses it took to finish something so that you, you can kind of get an idea of how long it might take you to finish it. So even though my goal with most of these items is to completely finish it, I do like to track my uses as well. But you can also do a project pan where you're tracking your uses and once you use something a certain number of times, you roll it out. So another question you might have is, okay, what products do I pick? How do I go about choosing my items? And I recommend choosing a nice mix of easy and hard items. Or if you're just starting out, maybe stick to just easy products, products that maybe you're close to finishing already, or maybe types of products that you know you go through regularly, like powders, eyeliners, it's gonna be different for everyone, but I like to pick a mix of kind of easier and harder products, like now that I've been doing it for a long time, I kind of have an idea in my head of how long it's gonna to take to use something. Sometimes I'm still way off and something takes me like two years when I think it's only gonna take me six months, but I have two videos on my channel that might be worth checking out if you want some more insight into what kinds of products might take longer or might take less time to use up, but I have a video on the easiest products to pan and the hardest products to pan. And so in that video I talked about like exactly how long it took me to use up certain items and that might give you a better idea of how long it might take you to use something, but we all have different usage habits. Some people wear makeup every day, some people only wear makeup, you know, a couple days a week, so it's gonna really depend on a lot of different factors, but I also think it's good to not have too many products in the same category in your project pan at once. I mean, I guess it could be good to have maybe two of the same type of product if you want to be able to switch it up back and forth. Um, but I find it a little bit easier to have like one product per category. Sometimes there are product categories where I don't have anything in that category in my project pan. Like right now, I don't have a foundation in my project pan because I just kind of want to be able to dabble between all of my foundations. There's some products I hardly ever put in a project pan like mascara, eyelid primer, things that I just go through naturally anyway. I would say if you're just getting started, my recommendation would be to start with just five products, all in a different category, and just kind of see where it goes from there. And then maybe give yourself an endpoint like three months from now. And then at the end of that time frame, you can look back and figure out you know, how things went and how you might like to do it differently in the future. So I mentioned a moment ago that I do my project pan updates once a month. At the beginning of each month, I come on here and share my progress, share my updates, what products I finished, what products I'm rolling in. But many of you watching this, I'm sure, don't have a YouTube channel, don't have a desire to start a YouTube channel. So um, you don't have to have a YouTube channel to do a project pan. You can certainly start one if you want to. In fact, if you do want to, highly recommend starting one. There's always an audience out there that wants to watch this type of content. But if you don't have a channel, another thing you could do is start an Instagram account. And 
you don't even have to necessarily have the goal of people following you. You could just kind of start it for yourself as a way to keep track of your progress. I'm not sure how everyone does it, especially people who aren't on social media, but it's nice to document your progress in some way. Most likely through photos, that's the best way to do it. But it's really nice to be able to look back and see the progression of, you know, start to finish of panning a product and being able to see the pan get bigger and bigger or the product go down. So for products that have a pan, like powder, or even like cream products that are in a compact. Those I would recommend just like taking a photo of it once a month or however often you decide you wanna do your updates just so that you can kind of see your progress over time. There are several different other types of products besides the kind that is in a pan. Um, another type of product that you might wanna pan would be in like a squeeze tube like this. And the best way to track your progress on this is to draw, you might, you might have seen people draw like a tally mark on this type of thing. So. Um, you can kind of squeeze all the product down and feel kind of where it ends and that's where I would draw my line right there. Um, and so that's that gives you a really satisfying way to see the product move down. Another type of product would be like a pencil product or a twist up product. And with those, I like to keep a little piece of paper. I just cut like a piece of paper, you know, printer paper, any kind of scrap paper lying around. This is the one that I have going for my CoverGirl Cole eyeliner pencil. And each month, I don't want to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll show you. Each month when I'm doing my update, I'll kind of place the pencil against the paper and draw a line where it is. I do this with not only eyeliners, but lip liners, lipsticks, anything that twists up or that you sharpen, I measure like this. Kind of like you would measure like a kid's height on a wall. I don't know if you guys ever did that when you were kids, but I remember we had like on a, like a door frame in our house every like every few months or something, my dad would like measure us and draw a little line. That's kind of like that, but for a makeup product. Um, and then there's also products that have a doe foot applicator, like a lip gloss like this. And some of these it's harder to track than others. With this one, um, I like to leave this type of product sitting upright and I can kind of hold it against the light and see where the product has settled. But some products like this don't really settle, so those are a little bit harder to keep track of. But with these, I'll also just draw a little tally mark where the product sits. And you can do that with the Sharpie, or with products like this, sometimes the Sharpie will kind of rub off, so I like to go over that with a little line of nail polish, because that stays on, it won't rub off with like your fingers or like moisture from other products. So I highly recommend doing that. So I guess that covers most types of products that you would be tracking. And it's also just really fun and satisfying to be able to see the little increments of progress each month. I'm telling you, it gets addicting. Like project panning really is an addicting process. It's so much fun. And I, I always just get so excited to like look back on my progress and I love being able to create little like photo collages of my progress to, to put in my videos. Um, but you can do that on your own, just for your own, just for fun for yourself, or you can, um, start a project pan Instagram. There's a huge community on Instagram as well. So, oh, some people also like to weigh their products on a kitchen scale and be able to see how many like grams of product they used in a month. I haven't done that. I just, I don't really have the desire to do that, but some people do enjoy being able to see that. So to wrap things up, I just want to share a few kind of like frequently asked questions and like troubleshooting <laughs> types of questions. So number one, the one thing I want to say is if you ever find yourself not enjoying a product or you realize you, you just don't like the product, you don't want to pan it anymore, go ahead and take it out of your project pan. Just roll it out. It should always be fun. It should be a fun process. It should just be a fun way to get to know your preferences and to get to know your makeup and to enjoy getting value out of your products. And if you ever are not enjoying a product or you decide you just don't like something, it's not adding any more value to your life to force yourself to use that product, you know? So I always say, don't hate pan your makeup. Now, I also am a huge advocate though for finding new ways to repurpose products that you may not like for their intended purpose. I actually have a whole series about this on my channel where I talk about different ways to repurpose different types of products. I have a video on powder, blush, um, lip products, etc. I have them all saved in a playlist that I will link below for you. I think it's a lot of fun to experiment and try different ways to use things before you just give up on them. But if you've exhausted all those options and you just aren't enjoying panning something, it's totally fine to go ahead and roll that out um, and maybe even, you know, find a new home for that product. And then the other big question that a lot of people have and that I've, I feel like the entire time I've been project panning, I've been trying to figure out the best way to balance this. But 
there's always a risk of getting so focused on your project pan items that you neglect the rest of your collection and I really just don't think that makes sense. I think if you if you find yourself like completely neglecting the products that aren't in your project pan, that's maybe a sign that you should switch things up or find some kind of way to also rotate through those products alongside your project pan. Um, otherwise, I think that's a really good way to get burnt out <laughs> in a project pan. But I feel like I've finally struck a pretty good balance here and I found for me the best way to kind of not neglect the rest of my collection is to also have like a rotating makeup basket shop my stash going on alongside my project pan. That way I feel like I'm always keeping things fresh and I'm also using those other things in my collection. I'm finding new ways to pair those things with my project pan items but I'm also allowing myself to take breaks from using those project pan items so that I'm not just exclusively using those things. Yeah I mean you'll have to experiment and figure out what works for you. It definitely takes time to figure out how to best structure things for yourself. But yeah, I think that is pretty much everything you need to know about starting a project pan. If you have any questions or anything I missed, definitely leave a comment and I will get back to you. I'm also gonna link a bunch of videos I've done on my channel about different project pan tips, videos about the easiest products to pan, the hardest products to pan. All, I've done a lot of videos on this topic on my channel in addition to just my regular project pan series. So I'll leave as many helpful videos as I can find linked down below. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel if you're new. Um, pretty soon I have my project pan finale coming up and then I'll be introduced my 2022 project pan which I'm so excited about so I'd love to see you back soon and hopefully I'll talk to you in my next video bye